All right, Geek Interview, we are back yet again for another review of Sherlock. Today, we'll be talking about Sherlock, Season 2, Episode 2, entitled The Hounds of Baskerville. So what did you think about this episode? I've not been looking forward to it because it is my least favorite of all the Sherlock episodes. This is actually, I think, the first time I've rewatched it since it originally aired back in like 2011 or something like that. I just, yeah... I, I'll be as kind as I can, but I didn't enjoy it. Wow, I, I can't believe we are on total different spectrums. I haven't been pleased with the storytelling of Sherlock as of late because I, I think a lot of the episodes that we've watched have been overstuffed. There's been too much plot threads in all the episodes in all the episodes that we've watched. This episode, I found it to be very, very, very straightforward, and it was nice to follow one story and not twenty different things. I get where you're coming from, but if you think back to the first season, I think the second episode of that is also the weakest because that's the one about the Chinese acrobats. And I don't know, I just always feel like the second episodes are kind of lacking. And this one was only written by Mark Gates. But don't they interchange like episodes? Doesn't doesn't Moffat write all the premieres and Mark do all the second episodes? I, eh, I honestly don't know. I just noticed when the titles rolled up, it was only written by Mark Gates. Do you have like any lingering sort of favorite scenes in the episode that you hated i just didn't like because i remember when this episode was getting aired because i was familiar with the story of the book and i remember thinking i wonder how they're going to do it if they are going to go down a supernatural route or it is going to be something else and when i watched it for the very first time i'd sort of figured that out about halfway through the episode or kind of roughly figured it out and i don't know it just felt like it was trying to be cleverer than it was in the execution of the idea not in any like style with the writing or anything from the characters were saying or doing it just felt like the idea of the episode felt like it was this is this ending should work and for me the ending just didn't work at all or the what was causing you know uh, this guy to freak out just didn't work for me at all how would you have made it better that's a good question because i like the fact that it's set in the country, and you probably won't know this because I wouldn't expect anyone outside the UK to know this, but in the late 90s, there was sort of, I wouldn't say a fever, kind of a fever about big cats or big cats being sighted out in these places. And there's one called the Beast of Bodmin. And if you YouTube it, you'll see the videos and it does look like a panther, but given the video quality, it could also just be a big you know, house cat from a distance. So there was a bit of fever about that in the 90s, and I liked how they worked that into it. But um, and uh, one thing I would have made different is have Lestrade with them straight away because he's underused throughout the whole season, every episode. And this episode, they bring him in, but they bring him in in like the third act, and they just sort of bring him in as a kind of device to help tell the story, whereas I think the banter would have worked a bit better if they'd been three of them rather than the usual... John and Sherlock banter. So that's what I would have done straight away is bring Lestrade in earlier. Like we've said, I really think that they misused um, uh, Lestrade for the most part mm -hmm. in the entire series. They sort of use him for like a punching bag. I love the opening to this episode where right. Sherlock busts into their, to their flat with a fucking harpoon. What person in their right mind would walk on a street covered in blood with a goddamn harpoon? He looked like he just killed Moby Dick. They never really explain it. They said it was something to do with a pig, but you never, I don't think they gave any other explanation for what he was up to. The cherry on top of that scene is when, when Sherlock goes crazy and starts looking for a cigarette. That's one thing I was very critical of at the start is the pace of that. Because during that scene when he's looking for a cigarette, he says something to John, like he suggests an idea, and John is about to reply, but literally as soon as Sherlock's finished one sentence, he says, no, that's a stupid idea, and cuts him off. And I thought, are you supposed to try to make that funny because the timing or the editing was way off? Because let's say Bendit Cumberbatch says something and it seems like Watson's about to react and then before Watson can react a split second, he says, forget it, it's a stupid idea. And I don't know if it was the way it was written or again, it was the editing, but it just didn't work for me. I've actually seen this episode twice. I didn't pick up on any strange editing in this episode. When the episode kicks off, a guy shows up and he says, you know, he says to Sherlock and John, that there is a wolf in the country. He is clearly like, like, like really, really neurotic. He's nervous. He's got nicotine stains on his fingers. He's got all sorts of 
shit, he just looks like a nut. Sherlock goes, I see you got nicotine stains on your fingers. And he's like, I, you know, just go ahead and smoke. And when when the guy starts smoking, Sherlock just walks up to him and he goes, he just inhales the smoke. And I found it so funny. It cracked me up. I must have, I must rewind that scene like maybe three or four times to watch it. Do you not think though this might just be me, but the actor uh, who plays the character that you're talking about later on in the episode, they meet a sort of local tour guide. Do you not think that those two actors really look alike? Um, I did not. I did not pick up on that. I I did not pick up on that. I thought the I thought the local tour guy guy, he was he was played pretty okay by 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 whoever that actor was. Mm-hmm. Um. I really, really didn't buy after he sort of finished explaining to Sherlock after Sherlock confronted the tour guide outside, and then the tour guide showed him a, a, a like a slab of a of a foot. Sherlock has to be smarter than that. I mean, if if I was Sherlock, I wouldn't believe that that footprint was real. The first time that you saw this episode, what did you think of uh, of when the tour guide revealed that big giant foot to Sherlock? I thought he would have questioned it more rather than just accept it. There's a few things in the episode that people just accept like when they try and break into, or they do break into the uh, army base or the chemical base at the start. They don't really question Sherlock or Watson at all, they say, apart from who are you and why are you here? And when they answer why are we here, it's always a very vague answer. So I always thought, you would ask more questions than that, surely. You wouldn't just accept it, especially the bit where they almost get caught, and the doctor sort of goes, oh, no, this, this is Mycroft Holmes. I know him. We've met before. This must be his friend that he's, he was talking to me about. And you just think, you would check on the doctor. The minute that they enter the base, is it's like the, I mean, I mean, for my money, the second I saw that base, I was like, oh, it's a British version of Area 51. I would imagine a place like that has photo ID. And if somebody, just anybody, checks checks the the checks the photo that they have on file with that person that Sherlock was claiming to be they would have been caught within 30 seconds there's a bigger mystery that comes first where did they get the four by four from I was waiting for them to mention it because I thought oh he would have stolen it from his brother or something like that but he did, no one mentioned where they got the car from I would gather that they kind of just like rented it but they didn't actually show they didn't actually yeah show them you know going to rent the the SUV. What did you think about when Sherlock and John finally go in the woods? Sherlock, John, and the guy and the gentleman that is seeing these visions of the wolf. Sherlock believes that he sees this this wolf in the distance. And afterwards, he comes back to the inn and he sits down in front of a fire. And, and Sherlock is visibly shaken. Like he is beginning to question his sanity. I really enjoyed that particular scene because... It was really the first time that we've seen Sherlock be truly, truly, truly vulnerable. I mean, we've seen him be vulnerable with Irene Adler, but not like this. No, you're absolutely right. I think it's he wasn't scared of what he was seeing. He was scared because he couldn't explain what he was seeing. That scene, the whole animal scene, I don't think that was designed to be scary for an adult. That's something to me from like... um, Little Red Riding Hood or one of those childhood fairy tales. It's just your adult mind is manifesting it that way. Because if you imagine a scary wolf, you would imagine a real wolf, not something like that. For me, it was tremendously effective to see Sherlock mm-hmm. be so unhinged. And when you know, you know, and when John tried to get him to open up about what he was feeling, I love the way that Sherlock reacted, and he and he basically told John to fuck off. And the way that he did it was he actually showed John that he was perfectly fine because he broke down that big guy with his mother eating eating dinner, I assume. One thing that would have changed about this episode is the setup should have been that they were just out in the countryside and they encountered these events rather than the guy going to them. That would have been- So you maybe get like five minutes of them just trying to be, you know, have a weekend away kind of thing. Do you think that they would be working another case in the country or do you think that would they, they would just be there just to be there. No, just just like a day off, day out kind of thing. What did you think of the townsfolk, especially the 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 bartender guy? I forgot, and I'm sure I've said this in other episodes, but I forgot that how hard 
they sort of try and, and as I don't even know if it's a joke either, but they put in the fact that people think that Sherlock and Watson are gay. Is that supposed to be a joke? I don't know. The type of relationship that Arthur Cronin Doyle wrote between the two of them, it was like he wanted to put them together at some point. A bit of a Mulder and Scully situation. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I've never really, I've read some of the books, but I've not recently enough that I could comment that on them. But uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if enough people are saying it. Is it true? Probably. Um, I just, in the show, I don't get that it's, is it a joke or not? And yeah. I think if you were remaking that now, you wouldn't. Do I don't that. think they would put that in. A lot of times that they do that in the show, they kind of do it, they do it to poke fun at it. And I'm like, guys, you don't have to do that. Just don't do that. The writer who does it the most out of the two of them is Stephen Moffat. He can write whatever he wants. I, you know, I have no, I have no issue with Stephen Moffat. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think that he's a, a, a gay basher or whatever, but it's funny because, yeah, he's the one that 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 brings it up multiple times in the episodes that he writes. It would be funnier if it was other people commenting on it, but not mm-hmm. to their face. Like you know, if the barman, if Watson, if he'd said that line about, oh, "Sorry, I can't get you a double room," Watson just gives him a nod and walks away. Then someone else comes up and the barman makes a comment to you know the barmaid or whoever else. But right. it's the fact that they're always saying saying it to their face. And it's just, here we go again. I don't understand why they keep doing that. What did you think of the uh, all, the the ultimate like like final showdown in this episode? All our principal characters go back to the woods, and Sherlock figures it out, and he figures it out that there's this mist in the air that makes people hallucinate. Yeah, as I said at the start of this, uh, it was just very disappointing, and. Oh, one thing about the showdown, and this isn't just a criticism of Sherlock, this is a criticism of a lot of British television and certainly a lot of British movies, is how do you make it exciting if someone doesn't have a gun? So they always have to have some excuse for someone to hold a gun, (laughs) because obviously we don't have access to guns the way people do in America. We can't go into shops and buy them, and the police generally don't have them. In this one, it's Lestrade shows up, and then the, the other guy steals a gun as well. Uh, but yeah, just uh, it didn't work for me at all. I can't think of a way they would have made it better, other than it was maybe like the tour guide, and it was, and maybe he was trying to run some scam, and there was something else going on. But yeah, I just wasn't happy with it. Do you have any more final thoughts about this second episode of Sherlock season two, The Hounds of Baskerville? Uh, I'll be very interested to see if episode two of season three is bad because, we've, in my opinion, we've had two bad ones from the second episodes. But apart from that, no, I don't want to beat up on the episode any more than I already have. I really, really enjoyed this episode. I really liked, again, I really liked how it was less, but less in a good way because, as I said at the start, I don't like how the early episodes of Sherlock have been overstuffed with too much crap. I like how this episode was was uh, was structured in that the story was simple. With that, Geek, if the folks at home uh, want to find you, uh, uh, where can they go and do that? Yeah, if you type in uh, Geek and Review on YouTube in the search, you'll find me there. If you guys want to chat with me about anything relating to Sherlock or anything else at all, You can also find me on Twitter. I'm at CreekFanatic88. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you when I see you. So much happened here, and so much is about to.